my name is Ariel Les, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about going from Adobe Illustrator to Affinity Designer. There are some things that are just shocking. It's like culture shock, but with programs, we'll call it program shock. And um, these things can be very surprising when you are switching over, especially if you did professional work. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is personas. Now, there are two types of personas. Well, there's actually three. There's the expert export persona as well. But the two main ones I want to talk to you about that were shocking for me was the pixel persona and the vector persona. So as you know, Adobe Designer is a vector-based drawing program. However, there is pixel layers and there is a pixel persona. What this is for is after you have your vector drawing, you can take a brush like I am, a pixel brush, and the pixel persona, and you can draw, or I guess add detail, to your vectorized art. Now this is useful for adding texture um, and just adding greater details. And that is very hard to do in just basic vector programs. So I find this especially useful sometimes, especially if I'm going for that type of look. Sometimes I prefer to just keep it vectorized. Um, some people are worried about the brushes because they are, you know, it's a raster brush, it's not really you're not going to be able to resize it as easily, but I mean, depending on the quality of the brush, I don't think it makes that much of a difference because you're not relying on this fully. Now what's cool is what you see me doing here, I'm sorry about the lag, by the way, my computer lags a lot when I'm trying to record like that. What you saw me doing there was I actually hid a layer in the layer and it will just draw on that one layer and I think that's really helpful and useful when it comes to the pixel brush. So right now I'm looking down here and if you look at the bottom, this one thing I love about Finity is that it shows you all the options. It like shows you some of the command keys and it explains like how things work. And that is so useful because when I was learning Adobe Illustrator, that was so frustrating to me um, is that I didn't do that. I found that so frustrating and so difficult to learn, but I feel like Affinity Designer is really good for learning. And I think if you're also teaching people about a program like this, this is a great program to learn off of. Another thing is, as you see it popping up right now, there's Assistant. So Assistant will make pixel layers, etc., things that you need to be done, and I don't know, it, it really does feel like having a nice little assistant. I just think that Affinity is a really good program to even get started on. Um, it's really easy to transition over. The layout is very similar to the Adobe programs, but not even that, I think the workspaces are actually set up in a nicer way. I The way I work, it's very convenient. I don't really have to tweak anything because it just works very well to how I want it to work. Now, looking at the pen tool, the pen tool works primarily the same as Adobe. There's really no difference, to be honest with you. However, I do find it to work easier, and I think the reason it really is with the um, help commands on the bottom, they really do help because they just, I feel like I understand the program so much better than even Illustrator. I spent more time using Illustrator, but I feel like I understand Affinity Designer a lot better, so. That's a little bit interesting. And you see me right now, I'm messing around with it, like showing, like when you listen to the command key, well, the prompts on the bottom, I guess you would say, that it really does help out. And it's really easy to tweak and mess around, and it does run fairly fast. So that's really nice about the program. Yeah, so that's basically all with that. Now we can look at some other things. Like for example, if you go up to the line, you will see a bunch of options here. And one of the things that is very noticeable is the pressure. Okay, um, Illustrator, you, there is also this option, you can do this. However, it's not as noticeable to me, in my opinion, anyway. So I find it really useful and really nice that you can just mess with the pressure right there. And it really gets that command right in your, the forefront of your mind. So you think about line pressure and it makes the lines just feel so much more natural when you were drawing. I really appreciate it a lot, and I like the way that Affinity Designer is laid out. Everything's laid out in a way that's really easy to access. Like, I, I think it really prioritizes work. So that's really nice about the program. So here I am, I'm just messing with the line thickness, messing with the, um, the node tool, I think. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything useful. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Anyway, so now looking around. There's one thing you know, so right there, that is where you would change the brush, basically. But for this one, there's a brush icon, and you just go over to the actual brushes, and you can go to, for example, textured, 
and choose that kind of brush. So you can import brushes and etc. And it just works like that rather than the toolbar right beside it. And I actually kind of prefer it to be honest with you. Um, not that much of a difference. I do think Adobe Illustrator was a little bit more convenient concerning that. So there is one thing that is very noticeable is that there is no merge option. You cannot merge layers. And I know for some people that's pretty frustrating. The most you can do is you can group layers. But that's about it. Um, nothing really outstanding there, but however, I think it is kind of nice to have to deal with the layers because when you go back to edit, it's really nice to have them there because when you merge, you don't, you can't really go back and edit so much. However, I think that's more of an Adobe Photoshop thing than an Adobe Illustrator, but that's just something nice about both programs. Both um, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer are like that. And again, just look at the layers, the differences. There's the pixel layer and the vector layers, but overall, it's pretty similar to Adobe Illustrator. Not too much is different. Okay, so now let's look at the Pathfinder. As you know, you use Pathfinder to help you cut things um, or to merge things, etc. It's really useful when you are building from blocks. Some people like to design this way. I personally hate it. I just like to use the pen tool, but it depends on what you're doing. For logo design, this can be especially useful. Now to do this, you, there is no Pathfinder. Okay, that's the first thing to notice. And that was really frustrating for me at first. However, at the top, you will notice that there is something similar to Pathfinder. Instead of bringing up the Pathfinder tool, it's right up there. And that is super convenient. So that's just right there. And so you could do basically everything you could do with Pathfinder. I don't notice anything different about it whatsoever. Affinity has everything that you need concerning that. However, other than that, if you do want to bring up those options from the menu bar, you have to go under Geometry. See, if you are used to thinking of Pathfinder, you're not going to think of going under Geometry, maybe, unless you're smarter than me, which wouldn't be too much of a shock. So that was just surprising to me. I had to look it up. Another thing to notice something that is missing out of Affinity Designer is there is no image trace. You cannot trace images. And that's pretty frustrating. I know I found that pretty annoying when I was starting. As you can see right here, I'm going to bring an image in. This is just that same vector image, but it's a PNG. Now the problem is you cannot trace it. There is no trace option. Basically, you just have to redraw it that is literally your only option with the program so if you use image trace a lot you're kind of in a problem if you're trying to switch over to affinity designer because it doesn't have it maybe in a future update they will add it i do not know so yeah that's a big downside to it and also for when it comes to the workspaces there is no um, extra workspaces for example some people said about bring up the different types. There's just one basic, but I do believe you can edit pretty easily. Um, but I know that's pretty disappointing for some people. Some people like to switch workspaces. It never bothered me, but I guess for some people it would bother them. Also, another thing to note is that you cannot import libraries of Photoshop patterns, only brushes. So for some people, that's a big turnoff. However, if you don't really use it, I guess it doesn't matter as much to you. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. Please feel free to check out any other videos. See you again. Bye-bye.